Hey everybody, good afternoon, happy Sunday everybody, welcome to our podcast, I believe we're in episode 9 now of our podcast, GAR Capital Official Podcast, I am your host, founder and CEO of GAR Capital, Carlos Garcia, thanks so much for stopping by again guys, taking time out of your day to talk markets with me. So today our subject of the podcast for this week will be the week in preview and week past the review. So we're going to go ahead and talk about what happened in the markets, what to expect next week, and how we're going to go ahead and play it. So let's go ahead and begin. First website here, as you know, this is going to be recorded on YouTube and also for the podcast on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and Anchor. So if you prefer more of a visual person, go ahead and go to our YouTube channel at GAR Capital. And if you're more of somebody listening to it in the car, or listen to while you're working out, or what have you, listen to our podcast on Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and Anchor. So, the market this week. The main thing I want to talk about this week is the trade wars, or non-trade wars, what have you. Looks like Donald Trump, our president, is talking about doing tariffs, or taxes, another word for taxes, for imports of certain materials, which will be steel, aluminum, even automobiles from Europe. So it's basically saying that cutting off free trade, which has been started since NAFTA, North Atlantic Free Trade Organiz- uh, Association or agreement, excuse me, agreement. That was between Canada, United States, and Mexico. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you my piece of, my, my, my two cents on it, excuse me. I kind of understand where he's coming from. On his campaign, he was talking to a lot of blue-collar workers about uh, protecting our borders, being more of an isolationist nation in regards to trade, being America first. That's key. That was key to his campaign and the presidency, which I understand. So I'll give the president a lot of credit for sticking to his word, even going against his party, because free trade is definitely a party, a a Republican standpoint or Republican, um, a pillar of Republican trade of Republican economic policy, lays a fair, we call it, government, non-government intervention, while the Democrats and more liberals are more about protecting their borders and not having free trade agreement. Now, you would also know that Bill Clinton, Democrat, was actually the one who passed the North Atlantic, the North, Atlantic uh, North American Free Trade Agreement, or what I know as NAFTA, between Canada and Mexico and the United States. So it's been in place for a while, as we know we have a gl- we're basically a global economy now. Uh, There's no such thing as just one nation. Everything is about global economy, globalization now. Uh, This was created based on outsourcing manufacturing jobs from the Iron Belt and the Rust Belt, I mean, Ohio, uh, Illinois, uh, Michigan, uh, those countries, West Virginia, those countries, those those coal countries, what what have you. Now, I can understand the president's position to protect his interests, meaning those voters, but at the end of the day, it's it's a little too late. Um, you're only gonna, I think you believe it's only going to happen in regard. It's only going to hurt the economy because we're a global economy, like we stated. So how do we play this? Again, guys, I've been saying before, and I'll say it again in regards to that. For regards to fundamental trading and in regards to day trading, we're just going to ride the wave. That's the main thing. Ride the wave in the stock market. Don't need to predict. Predictions are for weathermen, like I've always said. Pretty funny line, but it's it's true. There's no need to talk about where we think we think things are going to go. We want to pre- we want to preview, sure, but again, at the end of the day, we don't want to predict because predictions can come wrong. If we just ride the wave, the markets are based still on emotions and human trading. I know we have uh, computers trading, algorithms, and what have you, but again, still ride the wave. Momentum is the key for this market. We've seen a lot of volatility lately, a lot of swings. So, with that being said, looking at the market today, although close on Friday, Dow Jones would sell Dow 70, S&P is sell 13, and NASDAQ up 77. What hurt the Dow Jones this past week was Boeing, McDonald's, and Caterpillar. Boeing is very heavily weighted. McDonald's has been strong. But technology has been the bellwether, has been the strongest sector in the economy and the stock market for about years now. You know, your Amazons, your Googles, your Apples, uh, Netflix, of course, and Google. Uh, those companies, the FANGs, we call it the FANG, uh, F-A-N-G, Facebook too. 
Now, I've always said in the NASDAQ, it tends to be very tech heavy and those companies tend to lead the way. So if the stock market does well, then technology tends to ride with it. If stocks go down, technology tends to go down with it. But again, for the most part, you got to understand here, it's all fundamentals. Everything's based on a lot of fear and a lot of optimism. So right now, this trade wars, what does it affect? Industrials. It's going to affect companies like a Boeing. It's going to affect companies like a Caterpillar. It's not going to affect technology companies. Technology companies already made money with their tech, with the tax cuts, the, the Republican tax cuts and the Donald Trump tax cuts. So they're going to do well anyways. Yes, they have tech, tech, uh, hubs overseas, but for the most part, it's not going to make a difference. You know, your industrial companies are going to take a hit when it comes to these trade wars. So in order to play these trade wars, we're going to see how industrial companies do and short them against it. Commodities short them because the dollar is going to gain against across the board with these kind of protectionist policies. Europe, Europe and Asia are going to take a hit. So again, if you're a DAX trader, which is a German DAX, a FTSE trader, index trader, or a Nikkei trader, Nikkei right here, you're going to see those big swings. It's going to affect the markets. So again, you want to go ahead and make sure to take a look at the market and how it works in regards to these kind of headline risks. It's called headline risks. So we talked about exactly what we're expecting and what we think is going to happen. So again, these, this is big news, these trade wars, if we're going to have trade wars, because now we have a catalyst for the move to the downside. So not a predicting, but again, if we do get a sharp move decline, we're going to ride that wave down, make sure we have our targets in place, make sure we have a stop losses in place and make those trades and know our targets and get the hell out. That's the main thing. So let's talk about what's going to come up in the markets this week. Uh, we have a parliamentary election in Italy happening today. Uh, it's Sunday. Futures will open around 5. Services PMI at 4.30 in the morning for the pound. So we're going to have a very heavy central bank week. The Royal Bank of Australia rate statement and cash rate is this week, this Monday, at 10.30 at night. We also have retail sales numbers at 7.30. ISM non-faction PMI in the United States at 10 in the morning. Tuesday, we have Royal Bank of Australia Governor Lowe speaks. We have Aussie Gross Domestic Product at 7.30. Other than that, pretty quiet for a Tuesday. Wednesday, big day. for the for uh, We have non-farm payroll, uh, ADP non-farm employment change at 8.15. Canadian trade balance, Bank of Canada, rate statement and overnight rate, and crude oil inventories like we do every week at 10.30 in the morning. So again, we have two central banks that are already dictating policy and rates. So again, if you're an Aussie trader in Forex, if you're a Canadian trader in Forex, uh, CAD, US dollar CAD, take a look at that. That'd be a great catalyst to go. Thursday, ECB press conference and European Euro minimum bid rate. So again, central bank rate, big, big time. That's going to be on Thursday. Friday, we have a tentative announcement for the Japanese. That's going to be the uh, BOJ, Bank of Japan, policy rate and monetary policy statement and the press conference. Tentative meeting, we don't know exactly what time that's going to happen. But again, that should happen overnight. So if you're a day trader in the United States, prepare to be up around 1 in the morning for that to happen. But we'll keep you uh, in the loop on our Twitter. And then on Friday, we're going to have non-farm payroll change. So again, a very heavy central bank announcement week this week with some economic data. So we're going to have some catalysts to work with here. <clears throat> we're going to have a way to go ahead and make sure that we're on pace to, uh, to, make, this, to make this work and meaning to find some opportunities out there uh, in regards to central bank and in regards to economic data, which is you know GDP. We have some non-farm payroll. We have uh, ADP net data. We have some ISM manu non-manufacturing PMI this week. So again, those are kind of things that you want to wait for and you want to use that to your advantage because the market is going to give you those hints on how they react based on that data. So again, if we get some really strong data, we'd be bullish on that currency. If we get some weak data, it should be weak on that data. So if you're a Forex trader this week, this is a great week for you to make some profits and uh, you know make your month basically uh, or actually hurt your month if you do that. <laughs> but uh, that's where we're at for the week in economics. Uh, let's take a look here on stocks. For the most part, I want to take a look here at our earnings reports here for the week. So let's go to earnings whispers. Let's take here. Earnings whispers. Let's take a look at the economic calendar or the earnings reports calendar for uh, these companies that are going to go ahead and report this week. 
So Monday, we're going to have only three, nothing really going on. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at uh, Tuesday the 6th. We're going to have Target. That's going to be at 6.30 in the morning, retail sales. Uh, we're expecting 8.6 expected revenue. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look here at other companies, cars.com. Really don't trade that. Uh, other than that, I, I think Target is going to be the only stock that we're trying to look at. Yeah, our stock is, the only stock is going to be Target for Tuesday. Uh, we'll see how that trades there. It's retail giant, as you know. Uh, next one will probably be Dollar Tree, good company. Want to take a look at that. That's going to be at 7.30 in the morning. Amber Crombie, uh, we'll take a look at that. Another retail play. Options are not going to be as good on that. Uh, not as much uh, vol uh, volume there. Uh, let's see what other companies are going to show that day. Um, orthopedics company, nah, nothing really going on there. It's like Thursday. Thursday, we have Kroger. As you know, Kroger, they say they're not going to sell guns anymore, which I didn't know exactly what guns there are. Uh, what guns? I didn't know they had sell guns. But yeah, so that's going to be at 740 in the morning. Burlington at 645 in the morning. American Eagle Outfitters, same thing. We're going to take a look. That's a very big retail week. Uh, all of those uh, companies that we're seeing here, I'm taking a look. Uh, Party City Holdings, if you trade that. Uh, that's going to be at 7 in the morning. I uh, really don't expect to trade that at all or even take a look at it, to be quite honest with you. Uh, Dell Technologies, no. Let's, now let's take a look at that's. This is Thursday. Let's take a Friday. Friday, we have big lots in the morning at 6 in the morning. Revlon at 7.30 in the morning. But yeah, that's basically the only only trades. I, I would say Target is probably your best bet, the biggest stock that's going to trade this week uh, for any kind of earnings. Uh, earnings season is already kind of winding down, as you know. But again, these are some of the companies that you want to take a look at. If you're trading options, I wouldn't really worry about it. Just for the most part, that you're not going to get enough volume to make a difference. But what does help here is if you do trade the stock or you trade the actual uh, sector, which would be the retail sector, retail sector spider. How do I take a look at that? Glad you asked. Retail sector spider ETF. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at XRT. This is the retail sector spider. Take a look at that if you're on your computer or if you're on your phone. XRT. So this is from Global, Global Street Global Advisors. XRT is a bet, is more of a volume traded stock. Let's take a look how they've been doing this month. Uh, month ending uh, January 31st, 2018, up about 4.5%. In one year, 11%. In about 10 years, up 12%. Now let me see what, they're, what, they're, uh, what they have weighted. I want to see what's in this. Uh, holding the XRT. So I'm going to read you some of the companies that are owned in the index. We have Shutterfly, that's weighted about 2%, Netflix, Dillard's, Amazon, Overstock, Kohl's, Genesco, uh, JCPenney, Target. So Target's part of this. It's part of this. They own 100,000 shares in this fund. But the biggest weighted is Shutterfly. But again, Netflix is big and Netflix has hit a new all time high. So XRT has been boosted by Netflix and Amazon. Amazon's the fourth highest rated or the highest holding in this ETF, exchange traded fund. So again, you could take a look at this and you can actually trade it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my thinkorswim. Take a look at XRT, since we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the week. XRT has been pretty solid. I'm looking at it daily now at 45.31, off the highs of 49.09. Right now, we're right touching the 100 day moving average. So we wanna see how, how the market responds to their earnings report. Macy's had a good call. Good earnings report, and they're doing pretty solid. I'd actually like Target more than Macy's, but again, guys, it's all Amazon right now. Amazon online, the online presence is very strong. So again, I'm gonna take a look here on the daily. Let's take a look at an hourly. Hourly is range bound, nothing really much going on. If you're in a scalping mood, a uh, four hour same bet has been ranging since January. Uh, we hit the high of 49.09 back in January 15th. It has been range bound between 44 and 46.32. 4670 since then. So I have $3 range. Uh, nothing to really worry about there. Uh, if we can get a breakout here on the four hour chart of a 47 on the resistance line here, if you could see here, if you're watching on YouTube, then we can go and maybe hit for 49. But I wouldn't think Target would be the catalyst. I would see if we get some strong, you know, some strong economic data that may just push this over and we get some money into retail. Uh, retail has been beaten down uh, for the most part on a weekly basis, excuse me, on a on a monthly chart, oh, it's still actually been, I actually been pretty solid on a, on a monthly chart. But again, if you're looking on just in general, 
Uh, retail has been taking a hit. Similar stores like a Macy's, like a Dillard's, like a JCPenney because of Amazon. But retail as a whole has been doing pretty solid uh, in this ETF. So take a look at XRT. That may be a way to play on options. Uh, maybe go ahead and buy some 48 calls. Uh, I don't want to be able to take a look now since the market is close. But 48 calls here could be a way to play this sector after the target move. And if target does miss, we could see a sector slowdown and maybe we could short down to 43. Uh, since we're at 45, we could maybe shift to, uh, short to 43.30 on the ne nearest support level on a four hour uh, for some uh, maybe weekly plays. That'd be the play I want to do. Uh, that's probably the only market I want to see other than ahead of time, you know, the market at the downturn. Uh, another trade I want to take a look at here, if the Dow keeps taking a hit, you know, it'd be an industrial play, would be Boeing. Uh, Boeing, again, on a four-hour chart has absolutely been amazing. On a long-term period, they have been doing exactly what you want any stock to do, which has actually been up about 80% last year. But again, we've taken a hit off of 371. We're down to 343 here. Again, it has been very heavily weighted on the Dow because of how strong it's been. So again, our next support level will probably be 320. I would like to play here, if we get some weakness on Dow Futures, maybe play the Boeing level down to 330, so 330 puts here. So 330 puts at the end of the week is a very, very strong bet or a strong call or put, again, ahead of time. Uh, Boeing and Caterpillar. I love the stock, but I want to go ahead and make some money short term. Same thing with Caterpillar on an hourly, 164 the high, 146 currently. Nearing the support level here about 144, if you could take a look here as the candlestick did not settle. So we're actually nearing support levels of 145.33 on an hourly chart. If you want to take a look at Caterpillar, if we get a Dow bounce back, that'd be my first play to play the long. If we can break 145 here on the hourly, definitely we can see a little more weakness down to maybe a 142 to 140. So here you could actually play a 143 put option for the weekly ending. A 143, maybe a 144 put you could play on the option side would be a smart bet if you want to put. If you're playing on a breakout, of course, then I would actually play a 154 call because that'd be the next level of resistance here, right here on 154 after the next leg down. Same thing with Boeing. If Boeing bounces back and we get some dollar, uh, we get some Dow bounce back, then definitely some 350 calls will be the play I want to play on Boeing. Uh, could have been just oversold here. Again, just depends on the Dow. They're so heavily weighted. I want to take a look at that. When it comes to any kind of tech, tech has been very strong, even with a very volatile market. QQQ would be the play I want to do here. 166.13 here, right below the 100-day moving average. We could play the 167s, which is a little too close to the money. If you want to play the recent highs, play the 170 calls, depending on volume. Because if we do get a bounce back here at these levels that we've been ranging now for about a couple of days, 166, 170 would be my next target right here, 170 for the week. If we can get there by Friday, go ahead and make sure you have your target set so you can go ahead and get in and get out that trade immediately uh, so you can make your profits. And if you do hold some QQQs, That'd be a very good play to have ahead of time of any kind of big movements here in the markets. Okay, tech would be more bullish. If we're going to have issues with 10-year notes, as you know, we've been talking about the 10-year. The 10-year bonds have been paying right around 2.9. I'm going to go and bring that up for you guys here on YouTube. 2.9% right here on the US 10-year, about 2.868. We've been ranging, touching around 2.94%. But again, what's the play I've been saying on yields? It has been financials. Financials is the play because higher yields mean higher interest rates and higher interest rates means more money for financials. So what I want to play here, I've been saying these three stocks or these three symbols, XLF, which holds all these selective sector spiders and banks. You're probably asking me, Carlos, what does the XLF entail? So let's go ahead and bring up the spider ETFs. This is from State Street as well. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here at t ticker XLF, select Spider Fund, we'll go ahead and search. This is USSpiders.com. Again, you can see the performance here, 29% year over year, 3% three year, 18% on the XLF. Let's look at the performance here. I mean, uh, the holdings, excuse me. So the holdings here on the XLF. 
can just bring this up, excuse me. So we they own 11% is JP Morgan Chase, 11% Berkshire Hathaway, 8% or about 9% Bank of America, Wells Fargo about 7.41, Citigroup 5.68, Goldman Sachs 2.63, US Bank Corp, Morgan Stanley, PNC, American Express, all very, very high bull uh, uh, blue chip companies. I like them all. All the only one I worry about is Wells Fargo, but it's not that heavily weighted, so I really don't worry about that one in particular. So, with that being said, XLF, all these companies are going to are going to do well based on higher yields. So, this is a company. This is a, a ticker I would like to trade first. So, let's take a look at XLF. XLF here is trading at twenty eight forty one. We are the nearest to high of thirty. So, what's the next roll we're going to see here? If we get if we break three percent, I know we're going to hit thirty. 3% on the yields. So again, I would rather just to play on the yields is the only thing that's going to hurt it here is if people start buying bonds for safety due to the tariffs and the uh, bond, uh, the protectionist policies of the White House, meaning taxing imports. So again, take that with a grain of salt. Be very careful. That could hurt yields. That could hurt bond uh, yields because of the bond buying. So let's take a look at that. One, two, eight, 2841 here. If we hit three year bond, three year three percent on a ten year, I'm gonna target thirty dollar calls. If we start getting some tariff policy and some issues, I'm gonna go ahead and target here twenty eight, which is near the money calls, or maybe even some twenty seven fifty calls, uh, twenty seven fifty puts because we can get all the way down to twenty six and below if we start messing around here. Uh, twenty seven would be the support line nearing on the XLF. If you're a long term trader, twenty seven dollars, I am buying more for sure. Let's take a look here at the next stock I would like to buy. JP Morgan Chase with their Fortress balance sheet. They have strong cash flow and they're probably going to be more than likely to increase their dividends. So again, I want to hold this company. 113.45, 119 is definitely out of the question. I would actually say 120. So right here, because of what happened in the bonds, again, we've been ranging bounds. If people start buying more bonds, yields are going to fall. So again, we need bonds yields to rise up for this trade to work for us. So again, 120 would be my target if we hit the three dollar three percent yield on the bonds of the ten year U.S. Treasury. Uh, if you want to play a little safer, maybe a little more expensive, maybe some one seventeen fifty calls uh, by end of week, if not two weeks, uh, maybe ahead of the Federal Reserve. I would actually prefer two week calls ahead of the Federal Reserve. If we get a rate hike, which we're expecting, then one twenty would be my play. One seventeen fifty or maybe one eighteen would be a little more conservative. It will just cost you more, is all. So again, we'll take a look at that on Monday morning with our options clients so we can see the exact same play. Uh, BAC, which is the Bank of America, which is the other stock I like uh, in the financial sector. Um, again, on a fundamental scale, again, we're just talking yields here, we're talking bonds. It's going to help us out. $33 calls, very cheap on the Bank of America, which I like because they have high volume and definitely uh, very little on the cheaper end. So you'll own more calls, uh, not that much of a hit on your portfolio. But 3165 at the moment, I'm targeting 33, of course, on a 3% rise here. But again, for the most part, these are the kind of stocks you want to get into financials for yields, technology for a bull market, and short industrials if we get some more talk on the Dow falling and protectionist policies. Those are my three targets right now. So again, I'm going to repeat it one more time. Financials, if the yields on the 10 year rise up to 3%, I'm definitely going long financials. I definitely want to go long technology if we start talking more about a weakening market due to these protectionist policies. Tech tends to roll first. Inversely, if stocks tend to fall sharply, then I want to go ahead and short tech as well. Next one is the protectionist policies, like we talked about the Donald Trump White House. You want to go ahead and short industrials here. I would like to short CAT and I'd like to short Boeing. Those are the two companies I would like to short, meaning buy some put options. With these kind of protectionist policies, another question I've gotten was X. X is U.S. Steel Company. Would this help or hurt? It should help. But we're at forty-five, forty-one here on a four-hour chart. Let me go and take a look at an hourly. Again, range bound right above the hundred-day moving. Forty-seven sixty-four is the high here. I would just stay away. It's a little too volatile for my taste. I'd, I'd rather play Boeing and I'd rather play Caterpillar on the industrial. Why? Caterpillar and Boeing have been just bellwethers of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Are they going to stay that way high forever? Probably not. But again, you want to play that downside uh, probability. So again, those are the two companies I would like to short on the Dow and I would like to short for an industrial movement. Uh, any kind of fall in regards to uh, these excise taxes for uh, imports and it's kind of a trade war that we're having right now. 
So for the most part, guys, that's what we're expecting for the week. Uh, again, uh, another one here. I want to talk some some crypto here. If you've noticed stocks, I'm going to go ahead and bring up a very interesting chart here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and bring up here trading view. I'm going to let you see something very interesting. Bring up this chart here. If you're not on the on the, the if you're on the podcast, that's fine. Uh, podcast. Uh, if you're from the podcast and you're from uh, looking, reading, you're not going to be able to see this chart, by the way. So I'm going to bring up here the SPX on my trading view. SPX is the S&P 500. So that's a good way to see everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up interactive chart. If you are listening to the podcast, you can go ahead and pause this and you can actually write this down. Tradingview.com, type in SPX on the ticker symbol, and you can actually click compare, and you can type in the symbol BTC USD, which is Bitcoin against the SPX, which is pretty fun. So Bitcoin, as you can see here, let me see if I can bring up, see if I can bring up the settings on this. I want to have a little more of a line. Uh, let's see, bars, candles, there's a little candles, and screen, no scale, that's fine. Uh, let me see if I can go ahead and change the color here. I'm trying to change the colors here. Trying to find the colors here. Give me a second. Okay, that's a little, little more differentiating here. So this is on a one-hour chart, if you could see. Again, guys, if you're a podcast listener, take a look at S&P 500, SPX, and Bitcoin, BTC, USD on Coinbase. If you're here looking here, you can kind of see that we have a little bit of a correlation, meaning they're going up together. And we had a shirt, uh, a spike here in December, and then the sell-off down, and they actually correlated a bit. Now we're back in February and we're starting to see the inverse correlation here. So let's go ahead and bring up an hourly. Now, what has happened here in February where we're seeing the SPX, S&P 500 fall while Coinbase, uh, excuse me, while Bitcoin is rising. So we're starting to see now, which is actually see an inverse correlation, meaning as stocks are falling, more money is going into Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Is this a something that's going to be holding place for a while? No, I just found it very interesting that you're starting to see an inverse correlation between uh, uh, cryptocurrency and stocks. Very funny. There was actually a hedge fund manager on CNBC talking about that stocks actually followed cryptocurrency movement to the upside, kind of bringing that euphoria. But again, it fell in December, after December. Uh, I think we hit our, our low point in February. Around January, February, the first quarter in crypto and Bitcoin has been kind of a, a, a very hard hit. But again, for the most part, you're starting to see a bounce back in, in Bitcoin as right now we're at 11,000. Uh, we're actually at 11,400. So this stock, this is actually not even, uh, it's not even uh, updated. Uh, but the S&P is at 2690. So again, when it comes to price, no, but you can see the movement, the differentiation in movement, the inverse correlation. If I started seeing some more spread here, maybe we get to 12,000 and the S&P goes down to 2,600, then you can start talking about some theories here. But for the most part, I think it's very interesting that we're starting to see kind of a shift in cash or a shift in funds into crypto and away from the S&P or those stocks. Yes, stocks ended in the green yesterday, but you could see for the month, it is actually in the red in February. So we just started in a month. Let's see what happens. But keep an eye on crypto. I do think crypto would be a very good hedge in your portfolio. I wouldn't go more than 2% in your portfolio, maybe three. But again, it's a good way. It's a good speculation play long term. And it, guys, it is a disruptor in this economy. It's a disruptor. It's a new financial instrument. And I do believe a lot of companies, a lot of banks don't like it. Tough. I think it's a new technology that we need to embrace. Uh, so again, something that I wanted to discuss, the inverse uh, correlation in that. All right, guys. So that's basically it for the week. That's what I'm. That, that's my my uh, my uh, looking at preview for the week. Um, again, we have a lot of opportunities, guys. You want these kind of moves. You want volatility because we want to see exactly how we're going to move in the market. So again, it's a very heavy yen week. It's a very heavy Canadian week and a heavy, very heavy Aussie week. And of course, non-farm payrolls on Friday. We will make sure to have our uh, 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 morning note early. 
uh, earlier than usual around 815 to play the number and see exactly how we how we go around. So that's where we're at for the week, guys. Very exciting stuff. Uh, we'll catch you for the morning note. Actually, the morning note will not be tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will not be a morning note, guys. I'm going to give that announcement. We'll have an afternoon note at 645 Eastern Standard Time. After that, morning note will be every day at 845, except for Friday. For non-farm payroll week, we always do it early around 815. Answer your questions, and we'll talk the non-farm payroll number. So that's where we're at for the for the week, guys. Um, when it comes to earnings, nothing much going on. Take a look at Target, like we talked about. Take a look at the XRT, which is the retail, the retail uh, uh, spider sector. Uh, look at tech. Look at industrials, Caterpillar, and Boeing. Uh, you know, there's so much opportunities, guys. And you know, things are subject to change. So again, guys, just keep your targets, keep your risk profile, make sure you have it correct, and make sure to stay disciplined in your trading plan, and you'll be fine. Uh, another week coming up, guys. Let's go and kill it. Let's make March a great month. Uh, thank you so much again for joining me today. My name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of GR Capital. This is our weekly podcast, uh, previewing the week ahead and reviewing the week ahead. I hope you guys have a very profitable week. If there's anything else you may need, you can always email us, GARcapital at gmail.com or check out our website at GARcapitalFX.com. If you like this video, guys, on YouTube, make sure to comment and subscribe. If you like this podcast, make sure to review us and subscribe to our podcast, Apple iTunes and Apple Podcasts, and of course, Anchor. All the support is definitely appreciated. A lot of gratitude to everybody who has been supporting us since day one. We appreciate you guys. More great stuff coming. We will catch you guys next week for next week's podcast, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great and wonderful week. See you guys later.